So heads up, this video is longer than I thought it would be. Um, as a result, I had to break it into two parts, maybe three, but I believe definitively two parts. Once the first part ends, just start the second part. I'll just cut it there and have it continue. With that being said, start the video. All right, so I've been reading the Rust book and I'm gonna see if I can get the right out the guessing game based off the book anyway. So let's start with, let's find this book. So for you guys that are not aware, I think I went over it in one of my last videos, but there is a Rust book. Go to the, make it a little bigger. Ooh, that's already pretty big, huh? Uh, I think it's in Learn, Read the Book. And what I'm talking about now is this section. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to get through it. Open charm and open a terminal. <laughs> Make my terminal a little bit bigger. Charm's opening up right here. PyCharm. Oh, uh, the reason why I'm opening up PyCharm, even though it's a Python programming IDE, you can have a Rust plugin, which I made another video about. Um, check it out if you need it. If you don't, pff, it's whatever. So close this tool. Let's open this. Let's get this back up. Follow the beginning instructions. Setting up a new project. All right. Let's go to a directory that I will put new projects in. And let's call this, well it says cargo, new guessing underscore game. And that created a cargo guessing game, I'm guessing. Let's, let's see what it created. Uh, I have cargo, I have the main, and now they're gonna tell me to start editing it. All right, so now I can go to my editor, which is gonna be you. Uh, so I'm gonna make this smaller so I can still write in here. Maybe make this a little bigger. File, new project, Rust project. Ooh, I don't wanna create a new project. I want to open a new project. Open, going with this one open in this window so yeah now I have the guessing game and I have the source don't really need that right now so what are they telling me to do the first command cargo new takes the name of the project guessing game as the first argument the second command changes to a new directory. We skip the second command, we just open up the project in the editor. Next, look at the cargo.toml file. Guessing 0 0.1.0, has my name in there. Addition, so Rust 2018, even though the year is 2019. And then they want me to look at the main file. It's, let me click on that real quick. Uh, do I want to add git? Can so I can always do it later. Main file has what it says. Hello world. <coughs> and this, they want to see us compile and run this off the gate. So I'm gonna try this. Do this in my editor. Cargo run. See if that works. And I see a hello world here. All right. Now doing the guessing game. So the first part of the guessing game program will ask for user input process. Uh, the in first part of the guessing game program will ask for user input process. I input, process that input and check that the input is, is in the expected form. To start, we'll allow the player to input a guess. Okay, okay. 
So I want us to change things in here. Let's see how this works out in this new editor. Use S. I can scroll down and click on those things. IO. That looks like it exists. You want to put a colon after it. They want me to change main. So this is now. Guess the number. Oh, that's kind of nice. I don't have to type everything out. Please input your guess. Period. Um, and now we get to create a variable that is mutatable. Let mutable, mutable, uh, guess. And we're going to say that's equal to string. It's ready to input it, I believe, from the standard library. New. Complete that, and then it looks like guess becomes a string. You can see that right here. Okay, guess is a string. And that statement. Then we have IO that standard input read read line uh, oh and we're passing in the mutable so I seems like a pointer to the mutable variable which is going to be guess and then we're going to continue this line put the dot expect in the next one and I can put a message in here. At least that's what it's telling me. Message. Yeah. Fill to read line. And then end that statement. And then we do another print. Is that it? Just want to make sure it's correct. Okay. You guessed, I'm guessing this is how you do formatting. You guess. Um, okay, so I have copied what they wrote, and I should be able to do cargo run. And right here, as you can see, please input your guess. Um, so please input your guess comes right here. Guess the number is the first line. Please input your guess right here. Now we got to the standard read lines and I'm gonna put a number or a guess, technically speaking. I guess it can be anything at this point. So I'm gonna just say, Marcus is my guess. You guessed Marcus, all right? So we've taken the standard input, move that into a variable and then print it out to screen. That makes sense. Skip the explanation. Let's go to... Oh, they're explaining the expect, the result type. So yeah, from my understanding, um, well, new is gonna create a new string of sorts. Strings are like arrays of bytes in, in Rust. Uh, but here, where we have the expect, my understanding that returns a result type and a result type can have a the result that you want or a non value and a non value is considered some sort of an error and one way is to try to handle that in a I don't know a quick way is to use an expect Ex so when you get something that you did not expect you say fail to read line I know there are other ways of handling that but that's how they handle it here Um, scroll down, scroll down. They're going over some errors. Testing the first part. Yes, we ran it. Generating a secret number, I believe, is in the next portion. So, for generating a secret number, we have to add a dependency. So, we go here to where dependencies live in the cargo.toml file. Looks like the dependency is rand equals. Zero, oh, number lock. Zero point 
3.14 put that back here and they want to prove to us that it builds so we can do things like cargo build and as you can see here is getting ran and all of the dependencies that that thing needs cool now going back to the code generating a random number uh, some things have changed let's go back to main now we have two imports second one is use ran and that uh, auto populated for us R and G is right there so on this line we have we're creating secret number number we're sending equal to ran bread ring possibly dot generate range and the range at least based on this description over here move that over a little bit so we can see it. it says it has a high and low so um low high they just added that in for us i like the extra context that extra context is very nice um what else did they have here and they print out this is your secret number so print line which is a macro and the string is this secret oh the secret number is the secret number is we have our string formatting again. Secret number auto populate for us. Add that to the end of the string to complete the statement. What else did they add that's new? Please input your guess. Guess mutable string. Standard input. Read lines. Guess. And that is all they added. So the make this big again let's put this on this side scroll up from the top we have a new import which is the dependency that we pulled in we have this long line where we create the oh, it looks like it's i32 i believe that is unsigned or no signed i forget I32 and U32, I, I forget the difference between them. One of them is unsigned, so it can be positive and negative, and the other one can only be positives. If this is random number generated, it's probably just a positive. And we gave it the low and the high, which is from one to seemingly 100. So the number has to be positive. We print out that secret number, and then we have the regular program as we had before, has not changed. So I believe we should be able to do cargo run and then see things go. All right, we have guess your number. Secret number is 84. Input your guess and we can do things like 84 and the program ends. 